Hey everyone, this is Brian from ActiveMelody.com. Well, this week we're going to be taking a look at the Mixolydian scale. And that scale is used a lot in jam bands. So jam bands are like the Allman Brothers or the Grateful Dead or any of these extended jam type scenarios. Oftentimes, the guitar player, or whoever's playing a solo for that matter, will go into the Mixolydian scale. So I'm going to explain what that is and, uh, and how you can use it. And also, I'm going to show you some licks. This lesson is made up of some Almond Brothers sounding licks and some Jerry Garcia style licks. So I kind of took the two different styles and put them together and created this week's lesson. Uh, I'm going to break this lesson into two parts. So in this video, we're only going to look at the first half. But if you want to watch the second half, as well as download the tablature and the jam track so you can practice along, uh, you can go to ActiveMelody.com and look for EP080. So let's go ahead and get started with part one. All right, so let's get started. So before I jump into the specific notes, let me talk through tone that I'm using real quick. Um, I am playing obviously on a Fender Telecaster, and I have a, a little bit of a slapback delay. You can hear that. That's I'm using a TC Electronics flashback uh, pedal for that. You don't have to have uh, that. I just thought it gave it a little bit of a vintage sound to have a little slapback delay. The only other thing I'm using is the, the Boss BD2 pedal, the Blues Driver 2 pedal, which I use in just about every lesson. I have the overdrive set at about uh, 30%. So it's got a little bit of a little bit of a growl, but not too much. Um, and that's, that's really all I'm doing uh, from a tone perspective. So, as I mentioned in the intro, uh, we're going to be playing out of the Mixolydian scale. Now, not everything that I played uh, in, in that intro piece was all in the Mixolydian, but I did touch on it in a few places. And so some of you are probably going, what the heck's a Mixolydian scale? It sounds complicated. Well, it's really not. It's very simple, actually. It's the same scale as the major scale. And the major scale, by the way, is Do, Re, Mi, Fa, Sol, La, Ti, Do, So, Fa. Or an A. This is the major scale. <laughs> It's a very recognizable scale. It's easy for you to pick out. So if you're playing in, no matter what key you're playing in, you can use your own ear and pick that out, that scale out. Well, the Mixolydian scale is that same scale, but you change one note. You change the seventh note. You, it's a flat seven. So here's what I mean by that. If we're counting the notes, hear that? That was the seventh note. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. See how that was that was changed? All I did was uh, instead of playing it here, I played it here. So it's flatted that one note, and it sounds kind of funky when you hear it out of context without a backing track. But that's uh, or a, or a band or something. But that's the Mixolydian scale. That's all there is to it. You're just changing one note in the major scale. So now that you know how to do it, um, and you can just do it, you know, with your own ear, just find, count the notes and go to that seventh note and just flat it. And on the guitar, all you do is move it down one fret to flat it, and that's that's really all there is to it. Um, so I, as I play the Mixolydian scale, I'll point it out, and some of you may be going, "Well, why would you use that scale?" Well, it just gives you a different a different feel. It kind of changes it up. You're actually kind of straddling between the major and the minor pentatonic scale when you play the add that flat, one flat seventh note. It's a subtle change, but it, it can really uh, enhance your playing. And um, you know, guys like Robin Ford use it a lot, or even Jerry Garcia was really famous for uh, using the Mixolydian scale. Um, okay, uh, so the first thing that I played was this little thing that goes. Uh, and it was just this kind of repetitive, that's really an Allman Brothers thing that I've heard. And that, by the way, um, so let me back up. We are in the key of A, and we're playing right now in the A major pentatonic area. And to find that, so some of you are going to go, how do I get that? Um, what you do is you find the root fret. So wherever you would make a bar chord, if you're playing in the key of A, you'd make a bar chord here, right? So that's the fifth fret. Uh, that becomes, I always think of that as home base, and I say this in a lot of lessons, but I like to repeat it. Um, so that's where if you were to play uh, blues, your minor pentatonic scale would be here. All those notes are hitting the fifth fret. Well, if you go to the major pentatonic scale, you go down one, two, three frets. So that's the major pentatonic scale for the key of A. So when I play, that's you can see that's... That's just the notes right here uh, in the major scale, major pentatonic scale. Um, okay. 
let me uh, let me go back. So uh, we're starting here on the second fret, fourth string, with our pointer finger, and we're going to do a hammer on to the fourth fret, fourth string. That's the first two notes you play. Then we're going to do the same thing, but now we're going to do it on the third string. So we have. And then I play the second fret, third string. And notice I'm just picking that once and again. So it's down, up, down with my right hand. Down, up, down. And then on the tab, you'll see that I went, just gave it a little. Um, it's kind of like your voice when you're vo when you're singing and your voice sort of trails off. That's what happens when you play sometimes. Um, and to do that, it's just going back to the fourth fret and the second fret on the fourth string. Okay, uh, and you're gonna see that we're gonna repeat that lick a lot. And then I'm gonna come up here and go. Now that's a mouthful, but it's actually pretty easy when you when I break it down. So let's start here. Uh, we're going to start on the third fret, second string. Now, some of you uh, may go, "Hang, hang on, that's not in the minor, uh, the major pentatonic scale." Remember, the major pentatonic scale looks like this. We didn't, we didn't play that note. You would be right, but it is in the major scale. So the major pentatonic scale, penta just means five. All you're doing is you're taking the the major scale, do re mi fa sol la ti do, and you're just stripping it out to just five essential notes. That's the pentatonic scale. The major scale has uh, has some extra notes. So it has that note. And it has that note. So it has those two extra notes in it. That's that's really all there is to it. So just think of the, the pentatonic as just being a real stripped down version of that. It makes it kind of easier. You have less notes to worry about. Uh, and so that's why a lot of people like that scale because it's just kind of simple. All right. All right, so the lick goes. Let's get those first four notes. So we start here on the third fret, second string, second fret, second string, fourth fret, third string, second fret, third string. Notice the picking pattern with the right hand. It goes down, up, down, up. Now watch what happens here. Once you uh, land here on the second fret, third string, I'm going to go ahead and bar so that I can play the 2nd fret 2nd string. So watch this. Then we can come back and repeat the 4th fret 3rd string, 2nd fret 3rd string. Now we're going to come down and play the 4th fret 4th string. So you can see what's happening is you're doing a cascading. Watch this if we do it slowly. See how it's starting to cascade down? It almost it feels like if you're dropping a, you know, like playing pinball or something, and the ball's kind of cascading down something. Okay. Then I came up and went. Let's do that. So for that's on the third. Most of that's on the third string. So we're gonna go second fret, fourth fret. We're gonna slide up to the sixth fret. Come back to the second fret, back to the fourth fret. So we have all that was played on the third string. So let's back up. We have and then I'm going to take my middle finger and reach down and play the fourth fret fourth string and then land on the second fret third string. So slowly what we have is And then play that up to tempo, it goes just like that. Alright, let me back up and I'll play everything up to that point. So we have now where we're gonna repeat. And that is just the little that little intro lick that we started with. And now I go into the mix loading scale. You see see if you notice where it happens. And I almost kind of held out on that note to stress it, but it's... 
right there. So that's this is all a run from the Mixolydian scale for the key of A. So we're starting on the second fret, second string. We're coming up to the third, a sec, a third fret, second string, fifth fret, second string, second fret, first string. Now we're going to go to the third fret, first string. Now see, that's where we changed it. Now if we were to play the A major scale, it would sound like this. But it, it sounds more bluesy to, to add that <clears throat> a flat 7, and that's what gives it, that's what defines that as the uh, Mixolydian scale. All right, so we have, then we're back to the second fret, first string, back to the fifth fret, second string, uh, third fret, second string, and then we end it with, wait, that's how I ended it. So I slid up, so once we, I went to the fifth fret, second string, I slid up to the seventh fret, second string, just, just like that. All right, let me back up. Here we have. Now check the timing on that. I'm going to tap my foot. Three, four. Okay, now we're back to the intro lick. And then this time through, I went. That was an even bigger mouthful, but it's actually really easy because all we're doing is we're playing the A major pentatonic scale for that. And you're gonna see uh, that a lot of it is just bouncing back and forth between the fourth fret and the second fret. But I started that run by putting my ring finger here on the 4th fret 3rd string and I slid it up to the 6th fret on the 3rd string then I use my middle finger for the 5th fret 2nd string now it's important to get the, the right fingers for this because you're going to need your pointer finger for something else here so use these two, use your middle finger and ring finger for that that's what we're, those are the notes now after you hit the 5th fret 2nd string, you're going to come back to the 6th fret 3rd string, but as soon as you hit it, you're going to slide down to the 4th fret, just like that. Then we're going to play 2nd fret 3rd string, 4th fret 4th fret 4th string, 2nd uh, fret 4th string. So we have... That little run. Now after that, then I'm going to go ahead and bar when I'm playing the 4th fret 2nd string so that I can jump up and play the 3rd fret on the 2nd string. And we can play that. Again, this is another little cascade if you analyze what's going on. So we're going to come up play the 2nd fret 3rd string, 4th fret 4th string, 2nd fret 4th string. 4th fret, 5th string. So let me back up. We have... Now we're going to continue the cascade. Watch this. And for that, we're going to play 2nd fret, 4th string. 4th fret, 5th string. 2nd fret, 5th string. Open 5th string. So... You can see the cascade, it goes, starts here. Now after that, I came up and after we have that open note, which is convenient, that lets us take our hand off the fretboard, then I can put it back and use my ring finger to play the second fret, fifth string, slide it up to the fourth fret on the fifth string. And then the final note is the second fret fourth string. And you gotta slide that up. So let me play that whole little run. I'll do it slowly. We have. See how I came up and grabbed that with my ring finger? That allowed me to do this 
you know, have a free finger here to hit that final note. But, and it sounds probably, it may seem complicated. Some of you may be thinking, well, how did you know to, you know, to play that open note and, and, you know, how do you know how to resolve these things? A lot of that stuff I just do with my ear. And the way that you do it with your ear, you don't have to be a musical genius or anything. You just have to listen to other people's stuff. So, as I listen to what the Allman Brothers do, and I listen to tons and tons of Allman Brothers stuff through the years, I have these licks kind of in my head. And that's that's really how you learn, is by listening to other people. So all of this whole run, that's made up of things I've heard other people do. And it's hard to kind of dissect it and tell who, I know this is Clapton. Uh, yeah, huge Clapton fan, so you'll hear a lot of his playing and uh, or his influence and the stuff that I do, but this little run, that is totally uh, something that you'd hear in like vintage Almond Brothers. Okay, so then we get back to the little intro look again. Uh, and then, let's see, the last time through I went and for that uh, I'm going to bar the first two strings, start here on the 5th fret. As soon as I hit it, I'm going to slide up two frets to the 7th fret. And then just come right back to the 5th fret. So it's... And I think I just slid it. I picked it once. And then slid it with my hand to create the 2nd note. And then... This we've already done. So that, again, is starting on the 4th fret 3rd string. Sliding to the 6th fret 3rd string. And then playing that 5th fret 2nd string. And then we're going to, as soon as we hit that, we're going to pick it and slide it. And then the final note there is on the 2nd fret 3rd string. So this is the 5th, uh, sorry, this is the 6th fret 3rd string, 4th fret 3rd string, 2nd fret 3rd string. So the timing of that, you gotta let me tap my foot for that part. So uh, you can hear it creates its own little rhythm there. Instead of going, you're going. As soon as you pick it, uh, slide it down, but you don't slide it immediately. Uh, it creates a second note there if you kind of delay it a little bit. All right, so let me back up. I'll play everything that we've learned up to this point, and I'll play through it slowly. I'll tap my foot, too, for timing. One, two... Alright, so now we come to the D part of the song, and then I played this uh, uh, Mixolydian scale, but I played it in the key of D this time because we're playing in the D chord. And I'll show you how you can get to this this version or this this voicing of the uh, Mixolydian scale. Normally, when I play, um, I like to stay in the key that the song is in. So if we're playing in the key of A, like we are. I would just stay in the key of A. Even when the chord changes to D, I would continue to stay in A, and that will work just fine. You could play more uh, major, uh, major pentatonic stuff. You could switch to the blues and play minor pentatonic. But you, I would just typically stay in the key of A. However, in some situations, it sounds really cool to switch the scale to match the chord. You can do that too, and that'll give you some other options for playing. Now some players do that all the time. Jerry Garcia, for example, does that a lot. If you listen to any of those uh, Grateful Dead recordings, there's a lot of them on YouTube, you'll see that when the song switches keys, oftentimes he'll switch keys too. And that gives him his own sound. So, And I did this in this intro just to kind of show that we can do that and how this works. So when we switch to the D part of the song, um, I played this D Mixolydian scale 
Let me show you how you can get to the D mix loading. So if we're playing this chord shape, so I'm gonna assume you know how to make this chord shape. You have the two chord shapes, really, two the, the two major ones. This is how I think of it. You have your you know your bar chord like that. So like you're playing an A like that, or you can play one like this. Now that's a D. The D bar chord would look like this. So if we're using this voicing of a chord, where your uh, middle or I'm sorry, where your pointer finger hits uh, on the fifth string, that's the beginning of the Mixolydian scale. You can think of it that way. So let me show you the notes of that. Uh, it's also the beginning of the major scale too. Uh, but um, so you actually are learning two things there. But uh, the, you're t you take your pointer finger at the fifth fret, uh, fifth string, and we're going to go to the seventh fret, fifth string. Then we're going to go to the 4th fret, 4th string. I'm just showing you the scale, and then we'll get into the specific licks. 5th uh, fret, 4th string. 7th fret, 4th string. And so far, it all makes sense to your ear, because it's Do, Re, Mi, Fa, Sol, La, Ti, Do, right? So now we're on the 5th, or sorry, 4th fret, 3rd string. Now here's that seventh, that flat 7. So there's a, on the 5th uh, fret, 3rd string, then the seventh fret, third string. So if we put it together, so what you have is anytime you have a D now in a song, you can you know where to find that mixolydian scale, and you can make up your own little solos there. So that's what I did for this. So when I went, now the 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 scale will extend, so it doesn't end. So if you wanted to extend that D mixolydian scale and keep going up, you'd go. Okay. Um, and so that's what I did when I played this this little lick. Now let's learn the lick. So what, the way I started it was on the fourth fret, fourth string. Started there with my pointer finger. Then I came to the fifth fret, fourth string. Then the seventh fret, fourth string. Those are the first three notes. Now we're going to do the same thing, but we're going to do it up a string. We're going to do it on the third string. So we're going to go to the third fret. Or I'm sorry, the fourth fret, fifth fret, seventh fret. So let's put it together. We have. Now we're going to come to the fifth fret, second string, seventh fret, second string, eighth fret, second string. So watch this. We have. All right, let's do that slowly. Now we're going to walk back down. And I just hit each of those twice on the way down. So from the 8th se the fret 2nd string, we have 7th fret 2nd string, 5th fret 2nd string, 7th fret 3rd string. And then the final note there was the 5th fret 2nd string. So let me put it together. Here's how it sounds. And you can see, hopefully, with that explanation, how you can play your own stuff out of that scale. Now that you know where the Mixolydian scale is, um, you could continue making up your own solo or do your own version of it. You've got the notes now. So feel free to rearrange them and you know come up with something else. What's nice about this, this is where it gets really cool, is because the scale uh, you, that you just learned is also, if you think of it as an acetate, it's just, you're just laying it over the minor pentatonic scale for the key of A. So you could really quickly and very easily switch gears into the minor pentatonic scale and play some real bluesy stuff. So you can mix those two parts. See how I just went to the, from the mixolydian to the minor pentatonic scale. So hopefully that's you know light bulbs are going off for some of you out there, and you're starting to realize that these two scales are just totally a lot of the shared same you know notes between the two scales, minor pentatonic scale and the mixolydian scale, and they're all just kind of bunched together here. But if you can start to separate them out. Uh, visually, it's just a visual thing for me anyway. I'm a visual learner, so I guess we're all a little different. But I visualize what the scale looks like, and I can see it on the neck in my mind. 
um, then you can start to separate out and say, okay, now I'm going to go minor pentatonic scale. I want to sound more bluesy. Now I'm going to, I want to sound more like Jerry Garcia or whatever. So that's how you do it. Um, uh, and then to close that lick, I went. Now most of these notes here we've already played. So now we're going right back into the major pentatonic scale. So I'm going to go 7th fret 2nd string, 5th fret 2nd string, 6th uh, fret 3rd string, slide it down to the 4th fret 3rd string. So we have then 2nd fret 3rd string, 4th fret 4th string, 2nd fret 4th string. So let's put all that together. Then we're going to go and play those two notes. That's just on the third string, second fret, hammer on to the fourth fret, and then land on the second string. Okay, so at the beginning of the D part we have... And then there was a pause, and then I go into the E part. Now, I'm doing the same thing that I just did, but this time I'm going to switch the scale and I'm going to play it over E. And now, why did I do that? Well, the song switches to an E at this point, and you'll see that in the tablature, by the way. The song switches to an E, so to play this E chord, the sh remember the chord shape we just learned with a D, or we did played, we're going to do that same chord shape here, because that's where you do it for an E. Now, some of you will be thinking, ah, okay, so if this is where we, the E is, so I could do the E mixolydian scale like this. And if I wanted to keep going up. So the lick that I played, uh, and this will make sense now that you know the scale, was... Okay, so let's start it. Now we're going to start this lick here on the uh, ninth fret, fourth string. Then we're going to come up and play, and you really want to use your pinky. That's the proper way to do that for that note. Then we're going to come up and play the sixth fret, third string, seventh fret, third string, ninth fret, third string. Those are your first four notes, and you play them like that. Now we're going to follow that same tempo and go and for that we're playing all of those three notes on the second string so it's seventh fret ninth fret tenth fret so let's put those two pieces together we have now we're going to do this um, so after this note we're going to come down to the ninth fret second string then we're, we're going to come up to the first string on the seventh fret, and we're going to come back to the tenth fret second string. So we have let's start it over. We have, and that's what you should have so far. See, I put it to a little bit of a shuffle when I played it. And then I came down and went. Now watch this. So I switch from my pinky to my middle finger on the 10th fret 2nd string so that I can do this. Um, and what I'm doing for that is I'm doing a hammer on pull off between the 9th fret and the 10th fret on the 2nd string like this. There's the hammer on pull off. And then I slide it down to the 7th fret 2nd string. And you do it all together like that. So let me put that the pieces together now. So we have... Now I switched fingers there because it's easier for me to do the hammer on pull off like this. Some of you may be able to do that with your pinky. That's actually a better way to do it. I just can't really do that with my hand. So whatever uh, fingers work best for you, I guess. Then I come back. Again, you see a lot of this cascading stuff. I'm, I, I'm repeating now. I'm coming back to the 10th fret 2nd uh, string, 9th uh, fret 2nd string, and now I'm going to go 
do a, another hammer on pull off. This time I'm going to do it between the ninth, the seventh fret and the ninth fret. This starts here on the second string. There's your hammer on pull off. Then I do another hammer on to the ninth fret third string. So yeah, I just picked that once. So let me back up. We have. Let me do it slowly. Then to round that out, I went. So I just went back and forth between the ninth fret and the seventh fret. Uh, the ninth fret, I'm on the third string. Seventh fret, I'm on the second string. Okay, so we have. And then I did this uh, Dicky Betts like. Um, right out of the major uh, pentatonic scale. And that's just played on the, I'm starting that on the first string, seventh fret, uh, the first string, string, fifth fret. Then we're gonna go down to the second string on the seventh fret. Now I'm gonna do a hammer on between the fifth fret and the seventh fret on the first string. And then the final note there is the fifth fret first string. All right, so let me back up and I'll play through everything slowly. One, two. And that is the first half of that solo. Now, if you want to learn the second half, um, go check out ActiveMelody.com, look for EP080, and you'll be able to download the tablature for the whole thing and uh, the jam track so you can practice along. It's just an MP3 file that's missing the guitar part. So uh, you'll have all of those assets to, to play with. Also, you'll have the second video, the second half of the video uh, lesson. Um, it's a very affordable membership as well. So if you haven't checked it out, I, I encourage you to do so.